In the heart of Wyoming's wilderness lies a natural marvel that defies the very rules of geography. Imagine a single stream of water splitting its destiny with a mere trickle, yet its waters ultimately find their way to both the majestic Atlantic and the boundless Pacific Oceans. It's like watching a magic trick of nature unfold before your eyes, a single stream making a choice that impacts two of Earth's greatest oceans. Brief history of North Two Oceans Creek Centuries ago, explorers and settlers were on a quest to find a shortcut between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, known as the Northwest Passage. Interestingly, the Yellowstone cutthroat trout, a fish typically found in waters that drain into the Atlantic Ocean, seems to have found its own historical route through Two Ocean Pass to Yellowstone Lake. This route is believed to have existed about 14,000 years ago. Beginning its journey at Two Ocean Pass in Alpine Meadow, this creek is named after its founder, John Francis North. North Two Oceans Creek is nestled in the expansive wilderness of Northwest Wyoming within the Bridger Teton National Forest and has a special ability to split its flow into two directions, ultimately feeding into both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. How is this special? It's rare to find a creek that flows into two oceans separated by thousands of miles. Unlike most watersheds that send water only in one direction towards a specific ocean, this creek crosses the divide, letting water flow in different paths based on gravity and the shape of the land. A few placed rocks and gravity, then you have your water path drawn out. How strange. Special features of North Two Oceans Creek. The bifurcation happens exactly at Two Ocean Pass. It has a rugged landscape, and it is at this point that the creek encounters the rocky point that divides its flow. The Continental Divide is an imaginary line that separates the water bodies. It determines the directional flow of water across North America. Water on one side of the divide flows towards the Pacific Ocean, while water on the other side flows towards the Atlantic Ocean or its adjacent seas. How does it help the Two Oceans Creek bifurcate? These lakes straddle the divide, sending their waters in both directions. The River Thames is known for its tidal nature, where the water level rises and falls significantly with the tides of the North Sea. This tidal influence extends far inland to London, affecting the river's flow and ecosystem. The Great Stink of 1858 was a severe water pollution event on the River Thames caused by untreated human waste and industrial effluents. It led to the construction of London's modern sewage system under engineer Joseph Bazalgette. The Amazon River is the largest river in the world, judging by the volume of water it discharges. It carries more water than the next seven largest rivers combined, accounting for approximately one-fifth of the world's total river flow. Hoover Creek is unique or integrated because it flows into a lake, but the lake has no visible outlet. Imagine that, water rushing into a lake. But where does it all go? This creates an unusual hydrological feature where the water appears to disappear into the lake, possibly recharging groundwater or feeding a subterranean river. The Nile River is famous for being the longest river in the world flowing through northeastern Africa. The Ganges River holds religious significance in India, being worshipped as the goddess Ganga. If you're liking this video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Now, let's talk about the Jordan River. It is historically and religiously significant, particularly in Christianity and Judaism. It flows through Israel, Jordan, and the Palestinian territories and is known for its association with biblical events. The Jordan River has been a significant site for religious pilgrimages and ceremonies for millennia. The Yangtze River is the longest river in Asia and the third longest in the world. It plays a crucial role in China's economy, culture, and economy. Ecology. The Three Gorges Dam, built on the Yangtze River, is one of the largest hydroelectric power stations in the world. Its construction led to the displacement of millions of people and caused significant environmental and social impacts. The River Seine flows through Paris and northern France, and its banks are dotted with historic landmarks, including the Eiffel Tower and Notre Dame Cathedral. The Seine River played a strategic role during World War II, including the liberation of Paris in 1944. Imagine the Continental Divide ceases to exist one day. 
and all the waters start to flow in one direction. The breakage of the continental divide could be caused by intense geological activity such as earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, or massive landslides. Without the continental divide to separate watersheds, all rivers, creeks, and streams across the continent would flow in a single unified direction. One immediate concern would be widespread flooding along the newly unified river system. The sudden mixing of multiple large rivers could destroy existing infrastructure, leading to a big flooding in downstream areas. What would the flood look like? As the divide breaks, water that was previously held back by the ridge would rush through the newly formed gaps. Initially, this rush of water would be intense, rapidly filling valleys and low-lying areas near the divide. The floodwaters would move swift water maturity of wilds really downstream, carrying debris, sediment, and potentially large objects dislodged by the force of the water. The speed and volume of water would overwhelm natural and man-made barriers. The flood would affect a vast area depending on the size of the breach and the topography downstream. Flood waters could carry pollutants, chemicals, and hazardous materials downstream, posing risks to water quality and public health in affected areas. Government agencies would coordinate evacuations of affected communities to safe locations. Temporary shelters would be set up to accommodate displaced residents. Specialized teams, including firefighters, paramedics, and volunteers, would conduct search and rescue operations to locate and assist assist individuals trapped by the floodwaters. Conducting regular monitoring of water quality to assess contamination levels and ensure safe drinking water supplies for affected communities. Providing medical assistance, vaccinations, and sanitation facilities to prevent outbreaks of waterborne diseases and ensure the well-being of evacuees and responders. Regions currently on the dry side of the continental divide might receive more water from regions that were previously wetter. This could benefit agriculture, ecosystems, and human water needs in arid or semi-arid areas. Consolidated river flows could enhance hydropower potential along the newly unified river systems. This could increase renewable energy production and reduce reliance on fossil fuels. A unified water system could open up new economic opportunities for industries like tourism, fishing, and recreation, benefiting local economies along the river corridors. However, the Continental Divide isn't about to get destroyed, so we are not bothered with all these. Let us know your thoughts about this video in the comments, and remember to like and subscribe for more intriguing discoveries like this. See you in the next video.